What's up everybody, Rob here. So, unless you've been living under a rock, Olympic boxing has been in the news, and I'm not touching that controversy with a 10-foot pole. So instead, what I'm going to be doing is talking about ancient Greek boxing, the original Olympic sport. So, so here we go, a very quick look at ancient Greek boxing. All right, let's get to it. So the origins of boxing in ancient Greece date back to the Minoans and the Mycenaeans, with frescoes and paintings depicting the sport. And, and the first known mention of boxing in a literary source dates back to the 8th century BC. It is featured in the Iliad as part of the funeral games for Patrocles that were held by Achilles. Now, according to Greek myth and legend, the creation of the sport is often attributed to the hero Theseus, though Apollo was considered the patron god of the sport, and many other heroes in Greek mythology participate in boxing matches as well, including Pollux, or um, Polydices, uh, Pollux is the Roman name, um, I believe Hercules as well participated in a boxing match at some point, and plenty of other heroes. Now, boxing is just one of many combat sports the ancient Greeks participated in, the others being wrestling and pancration. And the big difference is that boxing is strikes only. Um, wrestling is no strikes, and pancration is vaguely sort of like MMA. MMA. It kind of is, but kind of isn't. That's a whole different topic. Uh, but boxing is, for the most part, strikes only. Now, the exact rules are somewhat fragmentary and are actually shrouded in mystery. We don't know the exact rule set, but we can sort of piece together what's going on here. So, um, also, it went on for the course of many centuries. You know, this you know, was attested in the Minoan time period in the Mycenaeans, all the way through to, you know, till the time of the Roman Empire, you know much, much later, you know, like we're talking over a thousand years, the rules are going to change up over that time period. So it's very difficult to say that there's a definitive rule set, especially for an overview like this. So, but this is generally speaking, what's going on here. Oh, and one other thing, the Greeks refer to boxing as pygmachia, which means fist fighting. That's exactly what it means. It's pygmachia, fist fighting. It, it is what it says on its tin. So what are the rules of ancient Greek boxing? So as I just stated, the exact rules are shrouded in mystery and are fragmentary at best. And of course, they may have changed over time or in specific circumstances. So, you know, exceptions do apply to what I'm about to say here, but here we go. First off, it is called pygmachia or fist fighting since the primary means of attacking your opponent is to actually punch them or use your fists or arms as the primary weapon. And um, grappling is uh, grappling is not allowed, or at least highly discouraged. Um, you can sort of push a little bit, maybe clinch up a bit, but you know, takedowns and such are not acceptable. Um, in modern boxing, the only legal strike is with the knuckles of the closed fist. Um, this was, of course, allowed in ancient Greece. You could just you know punch somebody. That's fine. But any other blow using the fist is also allowed or using the hand is also allowed, so hammer fists are allowed, open hand slaps, as well as forearm and elbow strikes, those are also allowed as well. Uh, the only thing that you are not allowed to do uh, with your hands and arms is eye gouging or pokes to the eyes. Um, like I said before, grappling is not allowed, so like no takedowns or anything like that, but some clinch work is possibly acceptable. Uh, there's some indica indication that you can say like clinch the guy up and then, you know, pull him off the side and you know, strike a bit. There is also some indication that kicks may have also been acceptable as well. Again, this is hard to confirm and maybe was done on a case-by-case -case scenario or the rules changed over time. Like all Greek sports, the participants in a boxing match were naked, except for an oxide wrapping called a hemates. These strips of leather would be wrapped over the knuckles and they would be used to protect the knuckles from injury and unlike modern boxing gloves which are you know padded obviously uh, they did absolutely nothing to cushion the blow or at least i don't think they did i'm not very keen on testing it if you guys want to test this out uh get some leather wrappings wrap up your hands with it and punch each other uh, punch each other in the face and uh film it just so i can laugh at you for actually taking my suggestion seriously don't do that 
Anyway, somewhere around 400 BC, these wrappings would be replaced by padded gloves with a fleece interior to pad the knuckles, somewhat like a modern day boxing glove, not nearly as extensive as modern day stuff, but you know, it's a start. And um, they were there to pad the knuckles and they had a hardened leather exterior and the strips of leather would wrap up the forearm to help stiffen the wrist. So it's sort of like leather knuckle dusters, kind of, because it would be hardened leather on the outside, fleece on the inside. Uh, they may also have had fleece on the outside as well, so the boxer could wipe away the blood and sweat from their eyes. There was absolutely no round system, no judges, or scorecard, or a ring. Fights lasted until one person either gave up or was incapacitated and unable to continue. There were also no weight classes, so competitors would gather in a group, and who would be competing against whom would be chosen by lot. So obviously a larger fighter would have an advantage and um, you could theoretically have somebody in today's terms would have a heavyweight or a super heavyweight fighting against the flyweight. Now, the advantage of course does go to the larger person, but this is not as much of a disadvantage as you would like to think. Since there was also no ring, there, was, there were no ropes or turnbuckles or anything like that. Therefore, there's no barrier to actually be pinned up against. Like you're not gonna get trapped into a corner and pummeled to death or tangled up in the ropes. So if you're fast and agile enough, you can just, you know, run rings around your larger opponent and, um, you know, hopefully, you know, score a knockout that way. It's a long shot, but at least you got something to work with here. Again, chosen by lots, pray you don't get the big boy. Also, knockdowns were not a thing either. So remember when I said, the match continued until surrender or incapacitation. This heavily implies ground and pound. Now there is one other way to end the fight. Now both fighters have to agree to this. And um, if the match goes on too long and neither wants to continue beating each other up, uh, both fighters can call a halt and then lots are drawn. And then the winner of the drawing of the lots gets a single unopposed blow against his opponent. So he can just hit the guy square without any sort of um, opposition. The guy cannot duck out of the way. He just has to take the blow. And if he survives, then his opponent gets to retaliate, do the same to him. And they keep going back and forth, trading unopposed blows till somebody goes down. Obviously, the deciding factor here is luck of the draw. Now, there were, like I said, there were no round systems and there would be no breaks as well. However, there could be a slight break, a short break, if both fighters as well as the referee decide that this should occur. Basically, all three parties have to agree to it. So if one fighter wants to keep going, they keep going. If both fighters say, hey, we want a break and the ref says no, you keep going because the ref can just do that. Uh, there are some other rules as well. Like I said, there was no grappling, so throws and takedowns are illegal. But, you know, maybe some clinch work is acceptable. Again, it's, like I said, the laws are kind of fragmentary about this sort of thing. And um, eye poking and eye gouging is um, illegal as well. And there's very, very strong evidence to suggest that um, biting and hair pulling is also illegal. Um, that's kind of a form of grappling. I mean, hair pulling is a form of grappling. You're grabbing onto the guy and pulling. That's not really striking. So I, it's implied. I don't think it's uh, mentioned anywhere directly. But in any case, uh, like I said, the rules are fragmentary. So maybe at one point it was legal. Another point it wasn't. It's hard to say. In any event, if you do something that is illegal, the referee will take his staff that he has as a symbol of his office as you know, the designation that he is the ref, and he will use it to beat you with it. He will just beat you till he basically gets the point across that you shouldn't do that illegal thing anymore, and then the match would continue. So yeah, if you don't want to get beaten repeatedly by the ref, don't do anything illegal. No warnings, no points taken off, he just whacks in the head with a stick. So would modern day boxing techniques help out in a match? The short answer is no, not really. Um, now, first off, we don't know exactly how they fought. We're trying to piece things together using fragmentary sources, including um, depictions on pots and paintings and statues and frescoes and such. And um, the stance and the guard are far different. The, the guard, for example, is much more extended out in front. Remember, you don't have these thick padded gloves. So if you have a modern day boxing 
stance with the, or a modern day boxing guard with the fists very close to your face, well, when your opponent punches you, you're going to be punching your face because, you know, modern day boxing gloves are giant, they're basically giant airbags. You don't have this. You have little leather wrappings that are not going to do anything and therefore you get punched by this you're going to be punching yourself. So the guard is going to be much more extended out in front of you. Um, head movement also seems to be more limited and possibly a lot more stiff in their movements. And they also seem to be much more upright as well. Um, see, blows to the back of the head were actually completely legal. That's not something like rabbit punches are illegal in today's sport. If you crouch down and you basically like um, just watch any modern boxer, they're, they're fairly low, they're fairly crouched, and then they duck under, they're basically presenting the back of their head to their opponent and their spine to their opponent. Now, you can't punch those areas in modern day boxing. In ancient Greek boxing, that was a totally legitimate target, and you can do that with a hammer fist or an elbow. So just you can just spike an elbow straight down the back of a guy's head, that is, or the back of his spine, or a hammer fist to the back of his head or his spine. That is perfectly legal. So you don't want to be crouching down. If anything, you want to be as upright as possible to avoid this sort of catastrophic thing from happening to you. Um, in a sense, it's actually vaguely Muay Thai-esque. Uh, whether, again, you can clinch or how much you can clinch and whether knees and kicks are allowed is a matter of some speculation, but it is actually, I would assume this is pure speculation on my part, it is more similar to modern day Muay Thai than it is with modern day boxing. It's called boxing, but it's vaguely Muay Thai-esque. Also, they made much more of a use of the hammer fist rather than the regular punch that we have today. The reason being that, um, I've discussed this in other videos, where if you punch somebody in the skull with a, you know, just a regular punch, you are very likely to break your own hand. And without modern day surgical methods, you are basically losing use of that hand for the rest of your life. It's not looking good for you in ancient Greece with, you know, with broken, with a broken hand. But you use a hammer fist, it's much safer, and you can hit with a lot more force. So more than likely, it's going to be more like um, forearm strikes and um, hammer fists and elbows than you are with uh, conventional boxing. So um, it, while it does share similarities with modern day boxing, it's really not. It's sort of its own thing with a vague Muay Thai twist to it. Also, pure speculation on my part, there is high, a high likelihood that there would be palm strikes and um, palm heel strikes as well as much more of an emphasis on hitting the body of your opponent, again, to avoid the breaking of your hands. That would be a very bad thing. Well, anyway, boxing would be adopted by the Romans, who called it pugilatus, which is basically where we get the word pugilism from, and it has the same basic principle, but the Romans, being, well, the Romans, took things one step further and used hardened leather wraps called a castus, which were sometimes studded with small pieces of metal, usually lead. As you can imagine, this is not exactly a safe thing and could lead to disfigurement and honestly up to death. And the Romans, of course, love this sort of thing because, you know, they're the Romans. Gladiatorial matches are kind of their bread and butter. That's kind of what they do. Um, any case, the sport of boxing would be banned around 400 AD as a cruel and barbaric practice by the Christian rulers of the Roman Empire. Though in spite of this, it would still remain a popular sport throughout history, down through the Middle Ages, until it was revitalized in the 18th and 19th century, particularly in Britain, which would then evolve into the Marquis of Queensbury rules, which are the precursor of modern day boxing. So that's it, just a real quick look at ancient Greek boxing. I hope you found this interesting and entertaining. Uh, just something to think about when you're watching the Olympics. I don't know if the Olympics will be over by the time I put this out, but any case, I uh, just thought it'd be fun to fun to do. So any case, please hit the like and subscribe button. More videos will be coming out whenever I get around to it. Have a good day. Or don't have a good day. Your adults have any kind of day you want. See you all later.